Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to Explain Our Explains. I'm Nick. And I'm here with Luther Blacklock, Master PGA Professional and inventor of the Explain Our Swing Trainer you see behind us. Now, for the past few months, we've been posting quite a few videos and images on Instagram, and we've had quite a few people sort of write in and ask questions about the swing studio here and some of the artwork that we've got on the walls. And so, a couple of months ago, we put this great picture of Lee Trevino on Instagram, and to date, it's still been our most popular post. Yeah. Had a lot of comments and a lot of feedback on it. And if you can zoom in there and see that image, it's a great picture of Trevino yeah. just after impact, the ball just leaving the club face. And I know you're a particular fan, big fan of this image and, and what it, it tells you about the golf swing. So perhaps you can enlighten us a little bit, Luther, as to why it's so good. Well, it, it, Nick, it's, it's a great <clears throat> drawing uh, because it's a great subject in Trevino and particularly highlighting exactly why he was who he was and his record. I would rank him in the top 10 of all time, comfortably, in terms of uh, ball control and what he contributed to the game. It's wonderful. Um, and the drawing is about Alex Hay, and this, this is an ink and board drawing um, in the style of Anthony Ravelli, who, who did Hogan's um, artwork for Hogan's books in the 50s. And that's where Alex got some of his inspiration from. And that's the, the black and white monochrome is very much part of his sort of portfolio. Um, but the thing about Trevino, in the picture, the club face is going towards the target and the club face is square. And when they measured it in those days, and they heard him in the 70s, he, he, he stayed square for longer than anybody else, to the extent that he had a sort of swagger of the, of, of the left shoulder. So uh, shall I just, just demonstrate that on the explainer? <clears throat> so conventional wisdom was that as you made a swing, your forearms rotated, and then they would rotate in this direction and continue rotating. Trevino went back, he was a bit bowed and shaft at the top, but he came back and the shaft stayed low, and he played a fade spin mechanism. So you can see that by holding out the hit there, he could go down the target line, and can you see, he was way across plane, and it was so pronounced that often he would come up with his body, and changed the angle of his spine through impact. So golf ball dispersion was six or seven percent in the days that Trevino was playing and when they measured him his dispersion was six or seven percent. So he, he, that there was a scientific reason that he was the most accurate of his day. Um, might have lost him a little bit of distance, draw spin tends to go a bit further all things being equal, but in terms of controlling the ball Trevino at this point in Alex's drawing just shows that he's going right, everything about him is going towards the target. There's no turning left at that stage. And also, while we're on that subject of, of the release through impact, you said there Trevino's extension through impact was longer than anybody else it was. at the time. Now, you have the option of, of swinging to the left a little bit, is that correct? Yes. Or you have the, re the option of releasing your hands um, so the club stays on the target line in that way as well. Yeah. So that, that's a, a really good point, Nick. The, the, you, I would say that the setup is, is a given. There is an optimum setup and there's an optimum backswing. But the moment the downswing starts, there's loads of choices to be made. So the, the phrase at the moment is the sort of backswing, flattening the shaft and turning left, which is essentially a fade mechanism. If, you, if you're powerful, you can afford to do it. And it's the, it's, it's the catchphrase of the day as we speak. But you can also, in the in this style of Watson, you can release down the line and re-hinge on the way through. Perhaps you can demonstrate what you yep, mean by that, absolutely. Luther, just so we, we understand yeah. it completely. Yeah. Maybe show the, the, the Trevino release and then, then the Watson release. Okay, so Trevino got to the top, he came through, shaft returned low, and you can see holding out the hit, the tip of the, the, tip of the roller is well above the plane. But that, but that, but the sh but the roller is still staying on the on the biomechanical plane, though. It is, but the tip the tip roll is going out wider. Okay. Okay. So it's interesting. Very gr point you made is that although the plane is a is a constant, because the roller slips and slides, I'm describing a figure of eight. So let me just go back to your previous question and say, okay, if Trevino did this through impact, draw spin would do this. You see. So you can see there's a big, big difference between the movement of the but face. But the club's still bin. resting on the plane line, but one's with wrist hinge release and one's with a hold-off movement. Yes, so if I, do, if I do the wrist 
hinge. There's, there's the wrist hinge okay. to plane. If I do the same with no wrist hinge and no form rotation, it would look like that. That draw spin, fade spin. Okay, so you have two up. You can still release in plane two different ways. Yes, but one way, the fade, you're holding out the hit and going that way. With the draw spin, you're allowing the club face to rotate down the line. So the fade spin movement, the, the, it is flatter going through the ball, the shaft is lower. Okay, so when you fade the ball, the shaft comes in low. When you draw the ball, it comes in higher. Okay, and how do you guard against the hands and club coming in too low and too left through uh, impact? By just having clarity. You know, are you fading it or are you drawing it? And if you're fading it, you don't want the shaft rising. You need the shaft staying low and turning left mildly. But this m magic phrase, we keep coming up with them in golf, like you stack and tilt or square to square. But this idea of turning left through the ball, keeping the shaft low, uh, in my parlance, that's always been a fade. <laughs> okay, all right, that's great. Now, another, another great image that has really stood the test of time, and I know it's really a, a, a very important image for you, is the, the Ben Hogan and the plane of glass image here. Yeah. And my understanding is, of this is that this particular image here really was instrumental uh, in you developing the x plane swing machine. And I know you've got quite a few thoughts on this particular image and where it's right and where you think it's maybe not quite so right. That's right. Um, if you could show the viewers, Nick, again, just show the two, the two pictures, because there's page 78 and page 79. This, this is a bit scrappy because this is an original first 1957 edition. First, first edition. edition. So on the left-hand side, there's the photograph of Hogan with a big sheet of glass resting on his shoulders. <clears throat> and that meant that that was a good overall view. It gave an idea to swing plane, live from the ball to the top of the shoulder line. Uh, but he's a very meticulous man, uh, Hogan. Why would he on page 79 go through trouble of giving us the second drawing? And the second drawing is the black dotted line going from the sweet spot, but actually going to the top of the sternum. So the logo for Explainer is Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, where you've got the man standing in the circle. So if my body's an, uh, a an axle, my arms are spokes, this is the hub of the wheel. So there. So this is the driver, this is the six and that's the wedge. So we said explainer with a line from the ball through the upper sternum. That applies to all clubs. So the wedge to the six to the driver, it changes. So the the thing about Hogan there, he's way ahead of he's way ahead of the game because <clears throat> back then, nineteen fifty seven, you know, he, he he's shown us the pane of glass, which is wonderful, but you know, such a keen eye on the next page, he's just modified it slow to show us. So the, shape, the, the uh, plane of glass suggests that the swing plane runs from the ball to here, but Hogan knew that it ran to there. So we always said explainer through the upper sternum. That's the correct angle for your body, your body type and the club that you're using. And Hogan had it absolutely perfect back in 1957. So why does the plane of glass image exist then? If the, if the image on the right through the sternum is the correct biomechanical plane, why? Because it was, a good, it was a good overview. I think <clears throat> that you see this drawing, it's a dramatic drawing. You can imagine Hogan there with a big sheet of glass resting on his shoulders. It carries weight and it gives you a sense of the club moving over, an, uh, uh, you know, moving through an area. The sweet spot of the club is living within that pane of glass, ideally most of the time. Uh, the second drawing is just picking up on the angle of the plane. It's not giving you the depth or the 3D. It's a 2D image, whereas a little bit more 3D in the, in the, in the previous image. Okay, yeah. that's great, thank you. And <clears throat> one of the other good images we have here from Alex Hayes' collection on the wall is the image of the, of the, of the golf grip. Yeah. And really, I think, you know, just glancing at it here myself now, it's the image really where the, the knuckle of the index finger is level with the, with the thumb. Yeah. And I don't know, you call it the short left thumb, yeah. correct? And in your opinion, it forms one of the key fundamentals of a technically correct golf swing, correct? Absolutely. <clears throat> so Nick's making a good point. And the thing for the for you viewers at home watching, you know, if you said, what are the two things that Luther absolutely goes to the bank on? Well, if I had one minute to give a lesson to last lifetime, I would explain the left thumb, Nick, as you described, okay? So all of us have a, a left thumb that if, we, if it rests, running down the index finger, as you rightly said, it goes as far as the first joint. Okay, so I wouldn't say that was a short or a long thumb, I'd say it's neutral, just the way the good Lord made you. Okay, 
The danger is, Nick, is if you stretch the thumb, it makes the back of the left wrist collapse, gives you a hooky grip, makes you, makes you over hinge and hinge across the line. So we want the left thumb bone to be parallel and the pressure to be in the pad. So you can't have a good grip without a good left thumb, and you can't have a good left thumb unless you, the left thumb is applied correctly to the club. So parallel to the shaft, just right of center. So this is pivotal. Then the right hand fixes it. In that case, the shoulders are good, the hips are good, the feet are good. So the left thumb is, you know, is the secret of the universe in golfing terms. That to me is foundational. And then it takes on from that lovely grip, which demands good posture, then the 15 element takeaway, the, the left shoulder, the first inch of the shoulder turn, then becomes very important. So I want everybody to turn the left shoulder, but the left thumb being out of line would hinder you to some extent. Uh, and if the thumb is parallel, even a little bit parallel and hooky is okay. You still hinge. Uh, if you like Jordan Spieth and you're parallel and a little bit diagonal weak, that can affect uh, your backswing more. So we, we can tolerate the grip being a little bit strong, but whatever, whether you're weak, neutral, or uh, sorry, weak, middle, or strong, the, the thumb bone keeps its shape. And you also find yourself using the pad of the thumb and not the joint. So that'll save your fortune in gloves. If you, if you hold the club in the joint of the thumb, you'll wear your glove out, you'll notice that. But if you use the pad, the, the, the leather won't work out, uh, wear out so quickly. Okay, that's great, Luther. Okay, Nick. Again, thanks for sending in the questions and the emails. Much appreciated, we enjoy answering them. We do. And again, you can contact us through any of the social channels we have or at explainart.com and uh, keep the questions coming in and we'll be back soon with some more answers. 